In a previous module you saw how we created a couple of standard WLANs. In this module we're going to create some autonomous WLANs and we're going to compare the differences between the two. When an access point has successfully registered to a controller and downloaded its configuration, it begins to operate as normal and it exists in a state that we call run. We can check that by connecting up to an access point. The first thing that we see when we log in is just a very quick status from the access point that it's in zone director manage mode and this is the latest zone director that it's been connected to. In order to check the access point status, we'll issue the command get director. And we can see here that the access point is in a state of run. Let's run through then what happens when we create a standard WLAN. Well, we create the WLAN on the controller and then that's deployed to the access point. Client will come along and associate to the access point and that client's details are registered at the controller. If there's a pre-shared key set on the WLAN, then the key will be negotiated and details of the key will be stored on the zone director. And everything is working as normal and that's a standard WLAN. If the access point loses connectivity to the zone director, then the access point will change its state to sole run. In this state, clients that have already been associated to the access point in the WLAN will maintain their connection. However, new clients attempting to associate will not. As we've seen, clients' details and key information is kept on the zone director. So for a standard WLAN, when a new client attempts to associate, that information will not get back to the zone director, and so that association will be denied. Let's take a look. Here on my phone, we can see I'm successfully connected to standard WLAN 1 and that the access point is connected and communicating with the zone director. So I've just cut the connection between the access point and the controller. We can see the access point is still in a state of run. If we go in and hit get director again, we can see it's still in run and it'll take some time for it to time out for that connectivity between the access point and the controller to be noticed. And now we see that the access point has changed its state and it's now in a state of sole run. And that means how the WLANs will perform is going to change too. Well, the first thing to test is that we still have a connection on standard WLAN 1 and we can see here that the connection is still up. But what about if we try and make a new connection now? So let's connect to standard WLAN 2. Let's put in the password that we set for standard WLAN 2 and we'll attempt to join. And we'll see now that we cannot. And the error message that we get that it's an incorrect password, when in fact the WLAN's advertised, but we can't make any new connections to it. If we go back to standard WLAN 1, we were previously connected to standard WLAN 1, but of course this is now seen as a new connection. And of course we still won't be able to connect. So what we have then is an access point that loses its connection to a zone director. And in this case, clients that are connected to existing WLANs will continue to be connected. However, the access point will not accept connections from new clients. Now this situation will last for 30 minutes by default. And at the 30 minute stage, the access point will then reboot. Once it reboots, any clients that were previously connected will not then be able to connect back into the access point. So let's think for a moment how this situation came to be. When the zone director was first designed, the access points and the zone director were designed to operate within the same network. It was never designed for access points to be deployed over WANs. However, with the improvement of WAN connections, that's exactly what some customers did. And that introduced a problem because latency over WAN links and sometimes disconnection of WAN links meant that the access points lost connectivity with the zone director. And so a solution was found with the use of autonomous WLANs. Let's have a look at those now. With an autonomous WLAN, we begin by creating the WLAN on the zone director, and that's then pushed down as a configuration change to the access point. A client joins an access point, and because there is a connection back to the zone director, the zone director will be aware of the client. Things like stats and so on will be passed to the zone director. However, the encryption keys are now managed by the access point. Now the access point loses connectivity to the zone director, and after a short period, the access point will go into sole run mode. During this time, any clients that have been connected to the autonomous WLAN continue to work as normal, and any new clients that connect to the autonomous WLAN will be able to associate, and if there's an encryption key set on the WLAN, then the access point will manage the keys. Obviously, the zone director isn't aware of the new client because there is no data being passed back to the zone director, but the client is able to associate and function as normal. Now there is one problem here and that's the setting that after 30 minutes the access point reboots if it loses connectivity to the zone director. 
which means the access point will reboot and those client stations will reconnect after the reboot. But it's an inconvenience and it's a setting that you do want to take care of. So let's look at all of those now. We begin then by logging into the zone director and we go to configure and access points. And what we're looking for is access point policies. Down here, we'll see this auto recovery AP reboots if disconnected from a zone director for more than 30 minutes. So we want to take the tick out of this box and apply. Then we go to configure WLANs. And in configure WLANs, we're going to create a new autonomous WLAN. I'll call it autonomous one. Select autonomous. For encryption, we're going to give it the default encryption key that we've been using. All other options will leave the same and then we'll OK. And there we have our autonomous WLAN. Let's look what happens now. My zone director is now disconnected from the access point, so the access point has gone into sole run mode. Let's have a look what happens when we try and connect up to our WLANs. If I try standard one, put the password in, attempt to join, we'll get the same error that we saw previously, that it's an incorrect password for network standard WLAN one. Let's dismiss that, cancel, and let's have a look now at autonomous one, which is our autonomous network. So if we now put in the password for the autonomous one network and select join, then we should see that we have a connection. And indeed we do. Let's just check it. Yes, there's our IP address. So even though we don't have a connection to the zone director, we are able to join the WLAN. 